Aloha everybody, welcome to part 4 of Sonic Advance 2, and we are rejoining Knuckles to take on the Techno Base. Because, uh, we have to find Gideon Graves and, uh, stop him from ruining Ramona's love life, of course. No, but, uh, actually, Techno Base is actually pretty, uh, unique for a Sonic level. Again, the thing I love about Sonic Advance 2 is that the themes are so great. The themes are so much better than what they were in Sonic Advance 1, you know, whether it's Music Plant, whether it's a nice snowy city, Ice Paradise, the volcano and a hot crater, uh, everything in this game just looks great and all the themes are great, and, uh, Techno Base is like one of the first Sonic themes to be like a cyberspace level, you know? In fact, it's probably one of the only ones. The only one that I remember that is also cyberspace. I think there's one in Sonic Advance 3, and, uh, there's also, uh, one in the Shadow the Hedgehog video game. But, uh, yeah. It's, it's a nice, trippy level. I'm not sure how exactly this works. <laughs> like, uh, did Dr. Eggman build this? Did, did Sonic and friends just walk in through the front door and it's all cyberspacey? Did they get beamed in through a computer to get to this level? How, did, how is this possible? How is this working? I don't know. But again, I love when Sonic doesn't make sense. I like when it's over the top. So I'm, I'm not going to question it. Uh, like Music Plants, they completely change all of the springs and everything to be a little bit more digital and computer-like. So all the rails are like beams of light. Uh, a lot of the bouncing walls are kind of holographic. Even the spikes themselves are holographic. You just saw a platform that I just jumped over there that uh, actually turned the spikes on and off. Uh, so you had to like time when you landed on the platform, otherwise the spikes would uh, damage you and stuff. So it's all interesting uh, cyberspacey Tron-esque computer stuff, and uh, it's a unique world. I really like Techno Base a lot. Again, though, it has bottomless pits, just like uh, Sky Canyon does, so take advantage of your double jump, make sure you're landing in all the right spots, and uh, you should be pretty fine. Unless you're running into spikes. So, once again, we are playing as Knuckles the Echidna, that good old knucklehead. He can climb walls, he can glide, we all know Knuckles' gameplay by now. Uh, I think when you play as Knuckles in comparison to the other characters in the game, this is when you start noticing how each character kind of has their own little momentum and their own little uh, differences, you know? Like, uh, when it, I said before, in order to get into boost form, uh, you just have to run for a little bit, basically, and uh, eventually you'll just jump into boost form and uh, you'll skyrocket, have the double image and everything. Uh, Knuckles actually takes the longest to get that boost form going, and... Yeah, it, like all the other characters have their own set amount of time until the boost kicks in. Uh, Sonic is fastest because, well, he's Sonic the, the Hedgehog. He's the fastest thing alive, don't you know? And, uh, you know, it, it just takes him a little bit longer. Like, Knuckles takes a lot longer than uh, Sonic, which also takes a lot longer than uh, Tails, which also takes a lot longer than Cream, you know? Like, they all have their own set kind of speed. But, uh, it's not just the boost, in fact. It's, it's, like, the double jump stuff. Like, when you hit a spring and you do a double jump, uh, depending on what direction you go, you'll either fling yourself forward, you'll fling yourself up, and, uh, one thing I haven't mentioned before is that you can actually do a backflip, too. Like, if you hit a spring, push the R button without holding any direction, uh, your character will do a backflip. And that's, for, that works for everyone. It works for Sonic, it works for Cream, it works for Tails, it works for Knuckles. Uh, Knuckles has, like, not as much momentum when he does certain jumps. Like, uh, when Knuckles does a double jump in the air, he does this cool little Shoryuken-type animation, but he can't go more to the right or more to the left like the other characters can. He can reach it if he's, like, right touching the wall, and he'll be able to reach, a, like, to the right of the wall, no problem. But, uh, if you press it at the wrong time, that Shoryuken double jump actually doesn't have enough distance. It doesn't have the same distance that the other characters have, so Knuckles will take getting used to in that respect. You can't go as far when you do a double jump. Another thing that's different is when you hold forward and you do the double jump, uh, Knuckles, he does go forward like all the other characters, but he actually does like this little glide missile kind of animation, and when he lands, he actually curls up into a ball no matter what. Like, you can't not turn him into a ball after doing the forward double jump. So they all have their own little characteristics and stuff like that, and their own little quirks. And, uh, it's alright, you know. I, I love playing as Knuckles, you know. I, I got no beef with him. <laughs> he still spin dashes, he's still super fast, so it's not like he's completely different from all the other characters, and therefore, oh, he sucks, no. No, he's just different, you know. I'm sure lots of people love playing as Knuckles. 
It's a shame you have to unlock him by playing five worlds with Sonic. Oh yeah, that's another thing I haven't mentioned. In order to unlock all the other characters, you actually have to be Sonic. If you unlock Cream right from the get-go, and then you decide to immediately drop Sonic and start feeding the game with Cream, you'll never run into Tails, you'll never run into Knuckles. Uh, the Sky Canyon boss will always be Eggman. Uh, and not Knuckles. So, like... If you want to unlock all the other characters, you have to beat the game with Sonic. And you have to get to the fifth zone with Sonic in order to get Knuckles, you know. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> and that's another thing. Uh, when you replay levels after, un after you've unlocked all the characters, uh, the damsels in distress, or... <laughs> there's only one damsel, it's Cream, but you know what I mean. Like, all the characters you interact with uh, won't be there anymore. That's Knuckles' up animation. Him training to be a boxer. He loves throwing his fists. <laughs> but, uh, like when you're Sonic and you replay Leaf Forest, Eggman will be in his hammer Eggmobile, but uh, the, the fist thing that's holding on to Cream, it won't be holding on to Cream anymore. She, she won't be there anymore. Uh, if you replay Sky Canyon as Sonic, uh, Eggman will be in the Eggmobile and not Knuckles. So, uh, they're pretty much a one-time thing. You unlock Sonic, or uh, you unlock the other characters, you don't ever have to see them in the Eggmobiles ever again. Just a little detail I figure I'd point out. Oh, there's another detail I haven't actually mentioned about uh, Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, when you actually push the jump button and you push the attack button, they actually do a little bit of a ground pound uh, kind of attack, where they'll be in the air and then you, they'll dive down towards whatever they're going towards, you know? Like, Sonic uh, bounces like a ball. He did this in Sonic Adventure 2 as well, when he got the uh, upgrade from Pyramid Cave. Uh, he just he can actually break uh, certain blocks, but uh, they're not a common occurrence. There are certain sections of floor in Sonic Advance 2 that you actually can break through uh, with this technique, but uh, there's so few and far between, and they don't they weren't required in order to get to the special rings that I needed. So, you know, there's not like they're a mandatory thing, but a lot of people wouldn't know th that there were breakable floors with the jump B attack, you know? And there are. <laughs> they, there just is. And it's just, you know, they don't come up enough for me to take advantage of them, so whatever. So Sonic can do his bouncing attack. Uh, Knuckles does a little bit of a dive thing. Again, just like Sonic Adventure 2, when Knuckles jumped in the air and pushed the attack button, he dives down. Uh, not as fast as he did in Sonic Adventure 2. In Sonic Adventure 2, he was like a fucking rocket. Just jumps in the air, boom, immediately down. It's whatever he's attacking. Uh, not so much in this one. As far as I know, Tails and Cream do not have a jump down attack. They push the attack button in the air, nothing happens. Tails flies, Cream sends uh, cheese after opponents. That's what I remember. I could be wrong, though. Anywho, folks, it's time for Eggman here in Technobase. His gimmick, this time, he's got four platforms that are circling his Eggmobile. You need them to, in order to reach Eggman because, again, you can only hit him through the dome. Uh, attacking him from the bottom or the sides won't hurt him. Uh, so you use the platforms, and the golden platforms stick spikes out after they, their jewel in the middle flashes. Like, that's what you're really looking out for. If the jewel in the middle of the platform flashes, it's going to activate its second function. The gold platforms are spikes, the white platforms spin, so you can't land on them, you know. And constantly while this boss fight is going on, Eggman shoots three energy balls uh, in order to, to, to attack you. And if you have no rings, when those energy balls hit you, well, obviously, they'll kill you. So you gotta watch yourself, you know, just don't land on the orange platforms when spikes are there. Dodge those energy balls as much as you can, and uh, just keep hopping and trying to bash into Eggman's glass dome, and you should be pretty fine. This boss ain't too bad, honestly. <laughs> well, it is kind of annoying when you're, you're jumping into Eggman and he shoots his energy balls right above. So, like, you're about to hit that glass dome, but an energy sphere just... It, it homes in on you. It's shooting where you are. And that's gonna be a tip to know for if you're trying to dodge the energy balls. Like, you want to be in a spot where the energy balls are going, but you won't be, you know? But, uh, yeah. Not a, not a bad boss at all. Anywho, folks, we're now heading to the last zone of the game. Unless you count the final level, which has its own big space station for a level, but whatever. Uh, this is... THE EGG UTOPIA! Yeah, the Egg Utopia Zone. It has a lot of callbacks to the Death Egg uh, Zone from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Uh, it has anti-gravity machines so that when you pass a certain spot on the map, uh, 
gravity totally shifts and Sonic will be upside down. And he still moves left and right, he still jumps when you push jump, but uh, it will take a little bit of getting used to when, like, you know, there's a platform that's below you on screen, but you have to jump in order to get to it, you know what I mean? So it's, it's a Death Egg type level. Um, again, lots of bottomless pits. This one has the most bottomless pits of any of the levels. Uh, every time you're in an outer space area, you better land on those rails perfectly, because if you don't, well, you're going to be falling back to Earth in a ball of glory. A fireball of glory, I should say. <laughs> you also have lots of poles that you can swing around on and jump off of. Like when Sonic grabs the pole, he uh, swings on it, swings on it, swings on it, until he reaches the bottom of the pole. And if you push the jump button at the right time, you can uh, fling yourself forward and stuff. And again, I'm not sure how Sonic and friends got to the Egg Utopia Zone. Was it the techno-based hard drive cyberspace that beamed them to the Egg Utopia Zone? Ah, all I know is Eggman's in outer space. We are too. So uh, just deal with it, kids. Just deal with it. <laughs> so again, Sonic has the jumping ball attack when you push the attack button. I don't ever take advantage of it, because it's a pretty useless ability, you know? It's not good for taking out bosses, it's not good for taking out enemies, it's just there, you know? It's just something that he can do to take out certain floors, but otherwise, I don't see the point of it. It doesn't do da double damage to Eggman when you do it to him in a boss fight, so it, it just gets you in more of a position to get attacked by him and more uh, vulnerable and stuff. Oh, I forgot what I've been holding off for the longest time. I don't know why I haven't mentioned this, but Sonic actually got a homing attack in Sonic Advance 2. You've probably seen it constantly during this playthrough, but I, I just haven't had time to mention it. Uh, when Sonic does... He pushes the attack button, or the jump button, I should say, again, in the air, and he does the insta-shield, just like he did in Sonic 3 & Knuckles, just like he did in Sonic Advance 1. And in Sonic Advance 1, he didn't have a homing attack, so, you know. Anyone going from Advance 1 to Advance 2 would be a little bit confused, because they got so many new abilities. But, uh... Sonic, when he's actually holding uh, the direction that the enemies are in, like if an enemy's to the right of me and I push right and A at the same time, he'll actually home in on that enemy. He'll actually do a cool little homing attack uh, animation stuff. So, uh, he does technically have the homing attack in Sonic Advance 2. Uh, it's good, it's pretty good, it's pretty useful, but, uh, you know. I just don't use it that much, because again, my 2D Sonic mentality is just to jump into enemies if I don't have to homing attack into them, you know? It seems to work pretty fine without the homing attack. Plus, uh, the other three characters, uh, Tails, Knuckles, Cream, they can't homing attack, you know? And it's not like the game's unplayable for them. I just don't homing attack all that much, although you can do it. I just prefer jumping into enemies, what can I say? Cool. And now we're at the last Chaos Emerald in the game, which is probably the only one you're going to have trouble getting. And the reason that is, is because of how sparse the ring chains are, and you're trying to get the best multipliers so you can get the best score. My only tip is that you want to follow the outer edge of the special stage and keep getting a multiplier through that, because if you could do an entire loop from where you started, uh, and go all the way all the way around and go back to where you started then you can get like a nine times multiplier you could easily make 200 rings and it'll save you so much effort and and hassle i didn't do that but <laughs> i got halfway i got a hundred rings that was good enough for me i'm sure i could make 288 seconds but yeah if you don't do that trick if you don't take advantage of your multipliers this one's actually kind of tricky because the rings are not spread out as much as uh, they are in the other areas And zero is kind of a nuisance because if you're if you're slowing down to take those corners, uh, zero can catch up with you and rob you of ten rings when he hits you. That damn robot bastard. <laughs> and unfortunately, this will be the last appearance of zero. He never showed up ever again after Advanced Two. He just had a cameo in this game. As far as we're concerned, Amy destroyed him on the Egg Carrier all those years ago. Oh, and speaking of Amy Rose, I guess some people are wondering, what happened to Amy? She was in Sonic Advance 1. And I own Sonic Advance 3, so I know she's in Advance 3, so what the hell, Clement? Where's Amy? Oh, Amy's in the game. Don't worry. Amy Rose is definitely in the game. 
Are we gonna unlock her in Egg Utopia Zone? No. Well, how do you unlock her, Clement? Oh, <laughs> well, funny you asked. You need to collect all the Chaos Emeralds. With every character. No, I'm not kidding. You have to collect the Chaos Emeralds with every character in order to unlock Amy Rose. She's in the game, but you have to unlock her by getting every single emerald. Not just one set, not just seven. No, you need 28 emeralds in order to unlock Amy Rose. <laughs> and every Amy fan was completely disappointed by Sonic Advance 2. <laughs> Anywho, folks, it's end game time. We're going to finish Egg Utopia Zone, and we're going to take the fight to Dr. Eggman in part five. See you then.